Remember that time when we made everything wrong with Pepsi in October of 2015? Right. Well, as we all know, since then Pepsi has become the face of peace, thanks to Kendall Jenner. And I think we could all use a little update on the brand. I mean, if I like world peace and world peace likes Pepsi, then I should probably like Pepsi, right? The only problem is Pepsi's got a lot of stuff to sin. Let's get going. You know how capital letters are often used to represent loudness or anger or importance? Something like Bobby Douglas Burns, if you don't get down here this instant, I will beat your fucking ass so hard, there will be nothing left of your body for forensic detectives to identify you with. You know, that, that kind of stuff. Well, Pepsi started out as Pepsi, and now they're Pepsi. I'm gonna let you interpret that however you'd like. <coughs> Pussies. <coughs> Also, because creativity and sound thinking are clearly what drives every decision Pepsi makes, the drink was originally called Brad's Drink. I know I talked about this last time, but what I failed to bring up is that Brad is not the founder's first name. It's a part of his last name. That would be like if I called my Bobby Burns YouTube channel, Burr's Channel. How catchy. Also, I feel like every Pepsi commercial would be 100% better if it was for Brad's Drink. Pepsi's conformity to the social norm began in 1931, when they too entered bankruptcy thanks to the failing economy and inaccurate speculation of sugar prices. I just realized that that is the second Great Depression joke we've had in like the past, I guess we just really hate people in, in the 30s. So did people in the 30s. <laughs> Something I didn't notice last time was that the original Pepsi Cola logo, you know, the one that was picked the same way you were in gym class, looks a shit ton like a blood spattering from a nasty murder in Sweeney Todd. They had a jingle in the mid 1930s that was designed to never end. You heard me right. Pepsi invented Vine. In the late 1940s, Pepsi CEO Walter Mack led an advertising campaign that focused on African Americans, an untapped market at this point because, well, Racism. Concerned that people might think he was ignoring the white market, he said this at a shareholder meeting. We don't want it to become known as the drink. <laughs> oh my god, that tastes horrible. That's like legitimately bad. Ugh. Fuck. Taste this. Taste this. Taste it. It's just like goo. Oh, I thought it was- teeth are covered in it. Ah, ah. Pepsi uh, sponsors cricket teams. That should definitely count as a sin, right? During New York Fashion Week in 2011, Pepsi debuted a tall skinny can for their diet soda that they said was made in celebration of beautiful, confident women. Hey Pepsi, are only skinny women confident? Can fat women not be tall? Where the fuck is my tall fat can, Pepsi? But seriously, just think about the impossible body standards this can sets for women. There was also that time where Pepsi took a deep ass cut when redesigning their logo for the 14th time in 2007. See, someone, let's call him Chuck because Chuck is a nerd name and we all know it, decided it would be super cool to include the numbers 73774 and each of its 30 new background designs. Real quick, I'm gonna throw us in for having 30 background designs. So why 73774 you may ask? Well, because it's the numeric translation of the word Pepsi. As in like, when, when, when you type it on an, on an old cell phone. Remember those? Te texting. This probably seemed like a great idea at the time, except for that was the year that the iPhone was released. Pepsi and Major League Soccer had a massive breakup in 2015, when the MLS left Pepsi for, you guessed it, Coca-Coca-Coca-Coca-Cola. It's now been two years, but Pepsi still gets nervous around British teens with calf socks and United jerseys. I feel like today I should also comment on what Pepsi did in Argentina. They changed their name to Pessi. See, 25% of the population there was mispronouncing their name that way, and apparently it is easier phonetically for Spanish speakers to say Pessi rather than Pepsi. But still, 75% of Argentinians were saying it the correct way. Can someone please explain to me how that warranted changing their name for the small minority? Using this logic, I should change my legal name to Lil Dillhole because 1.25 of my five friends call me that. As of writing this script, Pepsi is on the 18th iteration of their logo. However, this is not counting the many times they've changed up their Argentinian Pessi. Does that seem excessive to anyone? Anyone? Bueller. And because switching up just their logo didn't create enough confusion in the minds of consumers, the Pepsi company has also used 47 slogans in the US alone since the 1950s. 
Some of my favorites, the sociables prefer Pepsi. Have a Pepsi day. Nothing else is Pepsi. That's not even a positive statement. Nothing else is gonorrhea. Nothing else is HIV. Nothing else is cancer. You see what I mean? Drink Pepsi, get stuff. Sounds a bit like a politician. Now, let's not forget about the rest of the world. I mean, other than Argentina, because they don't have Pepsi. The company has used 26 international slogans since 1990. Slogans like, Pepsi, there's nothing official about it. That one was from India. It can be good, it can be very good, it can be Pepsi. That one's from Brazil and Portugal. And from Pakistan, meal turns exciting because Pakistanis aren't allowed to enjoy food without a Pepsi. I don't make the rules. Speaking of international, in November of 2013, Pepsi apologized on their official Swedish Facebook page for an ad campaign featuring Cristiano Ronaldo as a voodoo doll being punished in creative ways before the Sweden v Portugal 2014 FIFA World Cup playoff game. What? Pepsi and Coke have been so competitive that they have an official Wikipedia page dedicated to documenting their so-called Cola Wars. As everyone knows, in the 1970s, Pepsi started a challenge called the Pepsi Challenge. They conducted blind taste tests in which participants had to say which cola they preferred, Pepsi or Coke. And guess what? Pepsi won. People genuinely liked the taste of Pepsi more. So you're probably asking yourself, Bobby, why are you sending them for winning a taste test? Well, the reason is, despite the fact that people prefer the taste of Pepsi to Coke, Coke is still a much more popular company. It's such a slap in the face. And I like face slapping, so I'm joining in. See, Forbes has Pepsi ranked at number 29 with a brand value of $19.4 billion. Pretty good, right? Well, Forbes also has Coke ranked at number four with a brand value of $58.5 billion. Even with what the majority of people call a superior product, they can't break through the glass ceiling. Or is it the Pepsi clear ceiling? Sounds like they're all speaking to me, oh my god. This is horrifying. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, the reason we are all currently thinking about Pepsi. Last month was a real step forward in the pursuit of world peace, thanks to Pepsi and one outspoken activist. That's right, when casting their commercial, that I think was an effort to show solidarity with the disenfranchised and marginalized in our society, Pepsi decided it was a great idea to feature a super elite socialite whose primary contribution to the world has been blanketing it in duck face images. I'm also going to send whoever that guy is at Pepsi who sat in a room and thought, Hey, you know what's hip and rad and in right now? Protesting. We should really get in on this thing. Oh, but what if it's a fad? Uh, no, 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 this is definitely a trend. I'll say it'll at least keep up until Trump is out of office. Let's dig into this ad. Join the O conversation? Is this Pepsi's attempt to appeal to their Irish and Scottish bases? For going off of their track record, I guess the next step would be calling the brand O Pepsi? Also, for all we know, this could be part of a covert operation by Coca-Cola, sneaking signs into Pepsi ads that say Pepsi sucks. I mean, it could also mean peace, but that's, that's no fun. This rally looks pretty planned. People are marching, there are painted signs, so white people are even there, nobody's being beaten by police. So why the fuck did this photographer decide to photograph a blonde Kendall in that particular doorway? Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, he probably thought, based off every Jenner and Kardashian experience in the history of ETV, that Kendall wouldn't give a fuck about peace protesters. Oh look, we're kindred spirits. I also keep my expensive camera by the front door without a lens cap on. Why did Cello Man bring his cello? Of instruments to carry around, it seems to be up there with keyboard and didgeridoo on the conspicuity spectrum. I wonder what kind of amp he's gonna... Oh. Hey, look at you! Sin removed for the only guy to actually plug an electric guitar into an amp in a video. No actual human being walks like that. What if Pepsi's actually going for world's peace and Kindle is actually an alien life form? Pepsi truly is bringing all kinds together. Why is it a victory just because a cop took a sip of Pepsi? That doesn't make any fucking sense. In fact, I'd argue he'd have maced Kindle promptly for it not being Coke. Also, what are these fuckers celebrating about? They couldn't have seen the cop take the can. They have their own line of cops in front of them. What sheeple. And finally, Pepsi is not the solution to all of the world's problems. Coke is. And 
No, I'm not talking about the kind that comes in a can. Before you leave, let's do one thing real quick. Welcome to my shower. I'm having a severe drain issue. It's all clogged up. I need something to help unclog it. Perfect. Time to clean it out. We fixed the drain. We did it, guys. I don't think it'll be clogged anymore.